God bless you, I'm Apostle Barry Lowe. And I welcome you to this uh, <clears throat> faith service. Uh, today is June the 20th, is that correct? 2015. Praise the Lord. And God is busy being who he is at all times. You know, the Lord is not, has not changed. He's still God. And God is a miracle work in delivering God. He's a God of prosperity. Yes, God believes in prosperity. Hallelujah. Yes. You know, he created the Garden of Eden and put man in there. Man had no need, no want in the Garden of Eden. God believes in wealth and riches. He said the gold in the garden is good. That's what God said. So, so uh, it's, it's all right to have money. He wants you to have it. He just wants you to do the right thing with money. God is a God of great power, awesomeness. God is a God that, uh, a God of great spiritual gifts. Yes. And he gives those gifts to uh, mankind, hallelujah. God had to stop working miracles. But anyway, uh, we have Sister Angela Harris here today, and she will come and, and uh testify what God has done in her life is a miracle as it concerns her grandbaby, uh, Sister Angela. Mm -hmm. I had a grandson that was born May 5th, 2015. He was so big that they had to suction him out. His body was swollen, his face and head and eyes. And Stuggard did a hearing test on him, and they said he couldn't hear. So we had to take him to the children's hospital. Reverend Barry prayed for him. And when he made it to the children's hospital, they were saying they didn't know why Stuggard said that. So he can hear. Thank God he prayed. Thank that. you, Lord. Hallelujah. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Lord. Praise the Lord. God is working miracles. God restored. What's the little baby say? I got so many. Who got so many grandchildren? <laughs> Royal J. Hogan. Okay, he restored his restored his hearing, praise the Lord, and healed his body. Actually, the baby belonged to the Lord. The Lord told me to tell the baby that. Oh, uh, when Sister Angela told me about the baby, I, I was there on business, and uh, uh, we were doing some paperwork, but that really moved me, my compassion, when she told me the little baby she said, uh, the doctor said he was, he, he was deaf. And uh, she told me it was something wrong with her grandbaby. He had lost weight and all that. And I really wanted to just pray for the baby then. But she brought the baby in and uh, I started speaking to the little baby. I knew God had already healed the baby. And the baby started smiling at me. And the baby started moving his lips. Actually, that baby was, <clears throat> was talking. I told the Lord he could explain to me what the baby was saying. But you saw the baby moving his yes, lips. Sir. The baby moved his lips. This baby, he, not only can he hear me, he talking back to me. I didn't know what the baby was saying. Baby, what, four weeks old? He's he mine four. now. Uh, he's mine? Yes, sir. Okay. He turned mine on the field. Well, praise the Lord. So we thank God for that. And uh, Sister Angela, if you have to go, uh, you can you, you can go if you want to stay, you can stay, but uh, I do have a message today, and my message, the title of my message is, the choices that you make, they bring forth consequences. But before I go into the message today, we have the great apostle here with us, a man with a <coughs> pure heart. The word of God said, a pure, shall, pure heart shall see God. When you have a pure heart, you have a heart of love. You know, there are times, I'm a faith instructor. All I teach is faith, hallelujah. You know, and I see miracles all the time, I, you know, because faith produces miracles. But some people have, uh, are under the wrong uh, understanding of concerning faith. They think, well, you know, I just go operate in great faith, but I, I don't have to walk in love. Well, it's love that operates faith, hallelujah. It's love that operates faith, praise the Lord. So now... Thank you, Jesus. But we have the great apostle here, uh, Kirk Hughes. He will uh, come and read a scripture and elaborate on the scripture. And he will also uh, 
Lead us in prayer. Praise mm -hmm. the Lord. Glory, Glory to God. Jesus. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Let's bow our head for a moment of prayer. Lord, I thank you for your awesome presence. Lord, I thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, who shed his blood on Calvary. Lord, I thank you for the Holy Spirit who lives inside us, who leads and guides in all truth, who empowers us, who seals us to the day of redemption. Lord, I thank you for your grace and mercy renewed every day. Yeah. Lord, I thank you for your anointing upon your men of God and women of God. Lord, I thank you for your love and compassion you shown from the day beginning of the beginning of time. Yes. Lord, I ask you to continue the blessing on none us like you had done, Lord. Lord, I thank you for the word that's about to go forth that is going to change lives. Lord, I thank you for your blessings. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Glory to God. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. I have two scriptures that I'm going to come from. I'm going to keep it very briefly. But this first scripture comes from um, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9. It says, But it is written, Eyes have not seen, nor ears have heard, nor have they entered into the hearts of man the thing which God had prepared for those who love him. Eyes haven't heard. And also the other scriptures come from John chapter 14, verse 12, Jesus said that works that I do, the works you would do also, even greater works that you would do. God is about to change this world tremendously. Matter of fact, he's already doing it. Life has been healed. Yes. Life has been delivered. Yes. People with new hands, new hearts, new legs. Yes. He said, but I don't know I'm going to heal those who are crippled, or bless them with new hearts and lungs and ears and eyes. He says, I'm going to heal the emotion, hurt, the pain, the trouble, for they need their childbirth. Right. He said that, that the north is about to flow in Stuttgart, in the surrounding cities around the country. He said, the world is about to see my glory like never before. He said, the people start going to come out praising God. Yeah. They're going to come out their house. They're going to come out of church. They're going to see black and white. They're spending going to praise God together. Yeah. He said, the people are going to see my glory. They're going to worship me in spirit and truth. Yes. He said, no longer you're worshiping just in the house or in the church. You're going to worship me in spirit and truth. And that's the only way you can praise and worship God is in spirit and truth. Yes. And his son, Jesus Christ, who shed his blood on Calvary. The truth of God's word is going to yes. bring light to, the light to those in darkness. Yes. Watch the healing of God begin. Watch life change. You're going to see in your very own eyes. Yeah. What God is going to do and is about to do in his life for many people. Mm -hmm. Life will change tremendously. Right. Not next week, but right now, God wants to change their lives. Right now, he's changing lives right now. Yes, he is. And those who hear this word yeah. of God, hear the message of God, take it in your spirit. Yeah. Watch the healing begin. Watch the deliverance come. Yeah. Watch growth come. Watch him begin to grow. Open. Blinded eyes be opened. The word of God for the people of God. Yeah. You remember this day? God blessed upon your life. He said he already gave you everything pertaining to life in God. You have everything he already needs. Yeah. The healing, deliverance, strength, mm -hmm. love, money. Yeah. Whatever you need, God has already given to you. That's right. All you got to receive it by faith. That's true. The blessing of God is already there. Yeah. Receive God's word today. Yeah. The next voice you hear today is going to be a possible lover. Yeah. He's going to bring the word of God. He's a anointed man of God that loves people. He walk by faith. He speak nothing but faith. You ever be around him? I promise you, you won't leave the same. The next man of God, possible lover, may God bless you. Thank you. Praise the Lord. I, I always pray before I bring any message. <coughs> So, Father, I, we come to you now in the spirit of Jesus Christ. We're always in the spirit of Jesus Christ. That means we're accepted in the beloved, Lord. Yes. We know we are righteous because we're in him. Yes. We're made righteous in him, Lord. We know you hear the prayer of the righteous, Lord. Yes. We know you grant the prayer of the righteous, Lord. We know whatever we ask in Jesus' name is given to us, Lord. Yes. Whatever we ask in Jesus' name, Jesus himself said he will do it, Lord. Yes. Lord, there are people that are struggling, Lord, and they struggling with their emotions, Lord. Yes, Lord. The apostle brought that to my attention, Lord. I mean, there are people hurting emotionally, Lord. Uh, you know, you, the apostle.
apostles say, not only are you healing physical ailments, Lord, but you are healing broken hearts, Lord. That's yes. what you do, Lord. Yes. And Lord, I thank you for healing broken hearts today, emotions, Lord. Thank you. Thank you for healing us today, Lord, emotionally, Lord, blessing us, Lord. Thank you for presenting the word today. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise amen. Lord. Lord, the Lord. It says in Luke chapter 4, verse 18, Jesus himself yes. was reading from the account of Isaiah. He said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted. Uh, that wasn't part of my message today, but it, you know, uh, it's part of the message now because the Holy Ghost said part of the message. Yes. He healed the brokenhearted. You know, there are people walking about with uh, broken hearts. Now, there are some people who won't admit it. There are people been carrying emotional scars and hurts all their life. And they try to, uh, they, they, they just deal with it. The way they deal with it, they try to cloak it. Uh, they try to hide it. They try to uh, neutralize it, uh, what I mean by that. They try to make it so that it's, it's, it's not hurting them so, so they, they drink, you know what I mean? If I, they say, if I can just drink, you know, two or three gallons a day, you know what I mean? What happened to me when I was nine years old, or 16 years old, or 17 years old? I, I can just not think of that if I drank enough Crown Royal, praise the Lord, or whatever they're drinking now. Uh, E.J. E. and J. Brandon. That's what the old man used to drink. They used to drink that E. and J. Brandon, you know, and wine and everything else they sold at the liquor store. That's what the old man used to drink. And uh, because I had been hurt, you know, emotionally, and I didn't know what to do. I, could, I didn't know why to find help. And I, I had been bruised. I had been abused. I had been mistreated by those I thought loved me. And I didn't know what you know, and I just walked around angry. I'm talking about the old man, you know, angry. And I just, you know, kept going to the liquor store because, you know, I couldn't think of nothing else to do. You know what I mean? I had no answers, and that's why I would drink and get high, the old man would. And, of course, uh, the old man did like women. I didn't say just a woman, women. And I would just, the old man would go get a number of women and just, just sex and alcohol and getting high. But when you know, when you, you have to come off the high sometimes. <laughs> you know what I mean? The women are leaving, they go, you know, where they, you know, to their homes or places, and you're still there, you still hurt. You still bruised, hurt by what people have done to you. You don't know what to do. So, what you do, your routine is <clears throat> go back to the liquor store. You know what I mean? Buy you some more liquor. You know what's going on. It's still going on. You know, people are getting high because they're trying to numb the pain. They're trying to get the image of what happened to them out of their mind. They can't get it out of their mind. They don't know how to cast down imagination, mm -hmm. pull down stronghold. They, they don't know how to do it. And if they did know how to do it and they, and they were not born of God, they wouldn't have the power to do that. There are people hurting and don't know. So I'm going to say this about that. I'm going to pray for the people, and they will be set free. Uh, Father, I thank you for setting the captives free, healing the brokenhearted. Lord, let them know, let all people know that have been bruised by their parents or adults or people that were around them, other adults that they trusted, or even their friends or you know, uh, spouses, Lord, uh, let them know that you was not involved with them. Uh, that's a powerful statement. You're God of love. You was not involved with them, Lord. That was the devil working through people that gave him permission to hurt people, Lord. Hurt people hurt people. That's what they do. Uh, they can't treat people right when they have been abused. Abusers will abuse. That's what they do. Their many children have been abused. They grow up to be adult abusers. 
they were victims, now they go in and cause other people to be victims, Lord. But the answer to that, the cure for that broken heart is forgiveness. Lord, Lord we forgive those that have hurt us. Yes, Lord. We release them, Lord. Yes, Lord. Now that heals up. Yes. Because we don't walk around carrying them inside of our spirit and our mind. You know, they go on with their lives and, and if we carry them, we're just hurting them. And, and, and what they've done to us is replayed over and over and over again and we will never be here. But we let them go. We release them. We forgive them. We ask you to save them, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Well, Apostle, you open that door. Hear the word. Uh, my message is the choices that you made, they bring forth consequences. Stop worrying about temporary things. Actually, everything on this earth is temporary. The earth itself is temporary. There will be a new earth and new heavens. Hallelujah. Now, this earth will be it transformed. God said so. He will purge this earth with fire. He said so. Stop worrying about temporary things and conditions. Temporary things and conditions do not remain in existence. Temporary things and conditions do not remain in existence. So why worry about something that's temporary? Because if you worry, you will be stressed. You, you will have it can cause you to have high blood pressure, can cause you to have heart trouble, you know, and that worry and stress can take you out, and it has taken many people out. <coughs> when things are temporary, they shall change anyway. I came to tell you that things shall change. Things are changing all the time. You, we see spring, we see summer, we see fall, and we see winter. We see change all the time. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, temporary things only last a short period of time. Tem temporary conditions are displaced. So you can displace temporary things. Anything here on the earth can be displaced by man. God gave man dominion over this earth. Man can choose for things to be changed. Man can change the weather. So, Apostle, I don't believe that. Jesus spoke to the weather. Did it change, Apostle? It did change. He spoke to the storm. And he said, peace, be still. He came as a man. He was letting us know that man is in charge of this earth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The storm is a temporary thing. Don't be destroyed by a storm when you can change it. You can stop the storm and command peace. Temporary things only last a short period of time. Temporary conditions are displaced by the spoken eternal things of God. Hallelujah. Eternal things are the things that God has provided for his people by his word. You see, God's word, this, the God's word is eternal. His words are eternal things. Eternal things displace, replace temporary physical things. Hallelujah. You see, when I go visit sick folk, I know that sickness is a temporary thing. You see, I already know that. I know that this, that can be changed and will be changed when I speak the word of God. The word of God is eternal. You know, when, when the word says, and with his stripes we are healed, it didn't say, and with his stripes we are healed for six months. No, our healing and health is for always. God has given us eternal gifts. God can <coughs> say, you know, I'm going to cause you to be born again, but it only last for ten years. He didn't say that. No, we, we are born again, and we will be that way throughout eternity. God didn't say, I'm going to give you a sound mind for a few minutes. No, the sound mind that God has given to us is for eternity. And throughout eternity, our mind will be sound. God didn't say, I'm going to change your financial condition. You, you'll be doing better maybe three or four years. Or you'll, you, those three years, you'll enjoy life, but after that, You'll be broke again. No, 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 no. God is not like that. He is the eternal good God. Hallelujah. The eternal good Lord. So eternal things are the things that God has provided for his people by his word. Whatever you want is in the word. All I have to do is find out what's in the word and I have. I know everything in this word. 
you see, that God has given to me and that God has given to his people. I'm a minister of the good things of God. God sent me out to minister. Like I went to tell a young man a few days ago, and he was crippling in the bed temporarily. I came in and told him, say, now I just came here to tell you that God has already healed you. That's what I'm here for. I need to tell you that the work has been finished. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. That's why I said I'm a minister. I minister the things of God. Uh, eternal things are the things that God has provided for his people by his word. Whatever you want is in this word. Hallelujah. If you want a new physical heart, it's in this word. Hallelujah. If you want saved children, it's in this word. If you want deliverance out of trouble, and I'm talking about right now, I might have taken a couple of weeks, a couple of months, it's in this word. If you want a godly wife, it's in this. If you want a godly husband, if you want wealth and riches, it's in the word here. Yeah. I'm going to tell you how to get it out of the word, get it in your hands. <coughs> Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Uh -huh. Eternal things are the things that God has provided for his people by his word. You can believe the eternal word of God and speak that believed word and it shall remove and displace any temporal thing. See, any condition on this earth, earth is, is, is in a temporal state. Physical things are in a temporal state. Hallelujah. And you can take the eternal word of God, believe it and speak it, and you'll see the transformation of those physical things or that physical temporary thing. Stop being in fear concerning temporary things because you can choose the good things that shall displace them. Things, conditions, and situations in this earth, including the earth itself, are in a temporal state. That word temporal means pertaining to, concerned with, or limited by time. Hallelujah. Enduring for a short time short-lived. Temporary means lasting for a limited time. Impermanent. Impermanent means not permanent. See, see, some people, you know, the doctor give them a diagnosis of cancer and they immediately they call their lawyer and say, I need to get my will drawn up. I, I, I know I'm leaving, you see. Uh, yeah, but uh, that's an impermanent situation. That means it's not permanent. It, not lasting, hallelujah. But God's word is eternal. Eternal things are this place, uh, temporary things. All physical things are temporary. You're looking at this body here, uh, this physical body that I'm in. I'm, I'm a spirit inside a physical body. You're looking at my outward man. You don't see me. I'm in this body. Hallelujah. Born of God, spirit is all God inside me and upon me. But the thing um, I, I'm, I'm, I want you to know is you looking at a temporary body. Don't you know I have a glorified body waiting on me? It's in the Bible, praise the Lord. Jesus has a glorified body. I got one waiting on me. So this body is temporal. Hmm? It says in 2 Corinthians 4, 16. Hallelujah. Though the outward man perish, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. I got a body that, a glorified body that will be that way throughout eternity, forever lasting to everlasting. This, this earth here is in a temporal state. Hallelujah. This earth has been affected by the curse, by the devil, and by sin. But God didn't leave it that way. He sent Jesus to bring correction. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Let me make some statements. Uh, physical things are temporary, but spirit things are eternal. The spirit maintains physical things in existence. I say the spirit maintains physical things in existence. Uh, the spirit alters the state, form, and physical appearance of things. The spirit has to acquire man's permission to transform things in his life or on earth. You see, a bad situation, it will change. It'll be, it can become worse, or it could, could be, be completely done away with, and the situation uh, uh, would be good. But a man makes that decision. Man makes that determination of how things will be here on earth because God gave man rulership over the earth. No doubt about it. It's all true. I'm moving on. Thank you, Jesus. I want to make that statement. 
Uh, eternal means having a beginning but without interruption or end. It means unaffected by time. Thank you, Jesus. See, your help should not be affected by time. Hallelujah. You know, this Moses was over 100 years old. Thank you, Jesus. And his eye was not dim, nor his physical force abated. He still had his strength when he walked to his own physical. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, 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 praise God. Eternal means uh, timeless. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Now, Things in this earth are in transition. Transition means the process or an instance of changing from, from one form, state, activity, or place to another. Things in this earth are in transition. In other words, bad things can become worse or they can transition into good things. A bad condition or situation can transition into a good condition or good situation. The express choice of man's the express choice of man rather determines the transition of things and conditions upon the earth. I need to say that again. Because you know some people, you know, they, they play the blame game. If I hadn't been born on the wrong side of the tracks, Apostle, I could have gotten me a good education. Apostle, if I hadn't been black, I I I I, I believe that I could have Finish college, Apostle. Apostle, uh, if my mother had gave me more love when I was coming up, I, I believe I wouldn't be in the penitentiary. It's my mother's fault. She didn't give me enough love. Uh, people, people make excuses huh, for the situation that they're in. They, they're always blaming someone else when they should just take responsibility. You know, when Adam was in the garden, Eve was in the garden, the serpent came in and, and asked the woman, uh, had God said that thou should not eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil? He asked the woman that, and of course God had told Adam not to eat from that tree. And anyway, Adam ate, I mean Eve ate first and she gave it to him. Now the woman was deceived, but the man was not deceived. He knew what was going on. He knew he had the responsibility to, to tell a serpent to shut up and get out to God. Because God told me to keep this God. He put me in charge of this God. He told me to replenish the earth, to multiply the earth, to subdue it, to subdue you, things like you. You get out of here, devil, because this God will be all over the planet Earth. See, he knew that, but he did. He he went on and disobeyed God anyway. God said, when you eat the day that you shall eat from that tree, ye shall surely die. He ate and died immediately. Somebody said, Paul said, he lived over 900 years. That it, it took time for his physical body to die, but he died immediately. It was a spiritual death God separated from him. Now, when God came into the garden in the cool of the evening, he called Adam. And finally, Adam said he was afraid he hid himself. He said he was naked. And God said, who told you you was naked? Adam, you ate from that tree? <laughs> Adam, you know, the woman that thou gave me, she gave me and I ate. He, he didn't say, Lord, I, I surely did it's my fault and responsibility. You told me not to do it. I did it. Lord, I surely did wrong. I take full responsibility for my transgression for doing wrong. Lord, I know it's consequences. That's why I know I'm naked now. Because I did wrong. Lord, but, I, but I'm going to ask you this. Will you forgive me? Will you have mercy on me? We know God is a forgiving God. We know God is a merciful God. No, that's not what he did. He did not take responsibility for what he did. He said, God, the woman you gave me, he put it on God, uh, his, his transgression, he, he said, God, it's your fault. That's what he was saying. And it's this woman's fault that you gave me and why I ate from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Uh, uh, the express choice of man determines the transition of things and conditions upon the earth. God has given mankind the freedom to choose, praise God. 
the outcome of their life. God has given mankind the freedom to choose the outcome of their life. You know, people can determine to go to heaven and they'll be their apostle. No doubt about it. People can determine to go to hell and they'll be like that for eternity. People can determine to be healed and they'll be healed immediately. I approve. I say approve the word of God. People can determine to be sick or stay sick. And they will stay sick. People can choose to be wealthy and rich, or they can choose to live in poverty. People can walk this earth successful, or they can choose to walk this earth and then walk it in a defeated state of being. Hmm. Hmm. God has given mankind the freedom to choose the outcome of their life and the things that shall be in their life or the things that shall remain in their life. Now, consequence is something that logically or naturally follows from an action or condition. You do one thing and something occurs because of what you've done. But see, there are people that do things, and, they, and but when things happen, they say, oh, it's not because of what I've done. They have their heads. Oh, it's not because of what I did. There are people in jail, they're in prison. Uh, uh, I shouldn't be here. No, they went in there and stole like, those goods. But they want to say, oh, 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 no, no, no. It's because of my training. When I was a child, my mother did not give me enough chocolate chip cookies. Any excuse, and they won't take responsibility. I'm defining the word uh, <clears throat> consequence. Something that logically or naturally follows from an action or condition. Effect. The relationship, no, it's the relation of a result to its cause. The relation of a result to its cause. See, uh, there's always cause for an action. There's always any action that has occurred is because of a cause. Hallelujah. That brought forth that action. For every action, there's a reaction. Effect means something brought about by a cause or agent. Result. There are people doing things and things are brought about, but they. they they, 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 they deny it. No, it's not. Uh uh. No, 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 no. No, I'm not in jail because of what I've done. I, I, I did. <laughs> well, what I've done, I'm not in jail because of that. It's really the white man's fault. <laughs> you know what I mean? This person went and robbed a you know, uh, convenience store, but he's going to say it's the white man's fault. He's in jail. I'm, I'm going to move on with the message. The message is. The choices that you make, they bring forth consequences. And let me prove that with the word of God. It says in Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 19, I call heaven and earth to record this day against you. This is God speaking to us, his people. That I have set before you life. Life is here. You can receive eternal life now. You can receive Jesus as your life and say, uh, uh, re receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior. And you'll have eternal life forever. Mm -hmm. Or you can reject it. Because he said, I said before you, life and death. You, God does not force people to do things. He gave them a free will. They can choose. You can choose good or you can choose evil. You can choose the blessing or you can choose the curse. But whatever you have in your life is because you've chosen it. Yes. Did you say, Apostle? Well, now some things happened to me, Apostle. I didn't... I didn't choose those things. I'm going to tell you what God said. Let me, let me say this again. Deuteronomy 39, verse 19. I call heaven and earth to record this day against you that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore, choose life. God tells them the, the choice to make. He said, choose life. Choose the good things. Choose the blessing. You know what I mean? That both thou and thy seed may live. Now, God has told us what we should choose, but he don't force us to choose that. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. The things that you have in the life are the things that you've chosen. Plus, I didn't choose this cancer. Yes, you did. Yes, you did. Plus, I didn't choose this high blood pressure, heart trouble, bad lungs, bad feet, and arthritis. Yes, you did. That's, that's why you chose, you chose death. When you don't choose life, you automatically have chosen. Proverbs 26, 2 says, so the curse, some people don't know what the curse is. Some church going folk don't know what the curse is. Because you hear them walking around talking about, you know, the Lord put this curse, uh, I mean, this sickness upon me, 
to teach me how to be a better Sunday school teacher. God, she said, I said before you, the curse of the blessing. And life is here, and death is here. Choose life. Choose the blessing. You choose life, blessing comes automatically with life. Some people don't know what the curse is. Sickness is not a blessing. Sickness has funeralized many folk. Good God. Poverty is not a blessing. Anything that's not good is evil. And anything that's not good is a curse. And, and Proverbs 26, 2 says, So the curse causeless shall not come. Uh, the curse without a cause shall not appear in one's life. You see, Adam could have said, could have said, uh, well, yeah, I'm spiritually dead. Now the blur is not upon me anymore. The Spirit of the Lord has separated from me. And, uh, you know, the ground is cursed. You know what it means. The animals are cursed. This whole planet is cursed. And my wife, she got a curse on her now. Uh, uh, but it's not because of something I did. <laughs> you can say that. Adam can say, it's not my fault. <laughs> but he's glad. The curse caused this shall not come. The curse without a cause shall not appear in one's life. Now, cause is something that produces, that produces an effect, result, or consequence. Cause is something that produces an effect, result, or consequence. Uh, cause uh, means the person, event, or condition responsible for an action or result. And less means L-E-S-S -S mean without or lacking. And in, lack means to be entirely without, you know. Uh, sickness in, in your life is a result of what you've done. I don't believe that, Apostle. What, well, did, uh, were you saying that you was healed with the stripes and that you walk in divine health and all that? No, I didn't say that, Apostle. That's why that curse is in your life. You didn't have the living words of God in you. You didn't believe that God had healed you, and you didn't maintain that, and that's why sickness is in it. Hallelujah. Proverbs 18.21 says this, I won't be long today. Thank you, Jesus, but I'll be here probably an hour. Uh, Proverbs 18.21 says, Death and life are in the power of the tongue. Now, God says, choose life, and the life is in your tongue or, or death. Definitely, you can choose what'll be in your tongue. You can choose what'll be in your life by what's in your tongue. Hallelujah. You can choose, you, you have the freedom to choose death. You have the freedom to choose sickness and disease. You have the freedom to choose poverty. Or you have the freedom to choose health, prosperity, and eternal life. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. And they that love it shall eat the fruit there. You shall partake of the things that come forth from your tongue. Whether they be good or evil, whether they be the blessing or the curse, whether they be life or death. Hallelujah. Some people are in trouble now because of their tongue. That's right. There are people on death row now because of their tongue. There are people now at home crying, thinking about committing suicide because their, their marriage broke up because of their tongue. There are people in poverty now because of their tongue. God said he's providing all good things. Folks say, no, you didn't, Lord, you didn't provide, and they're in poverty. And Paul said, I don't know why I'm in poverty. Why is the Lord letting this out? Lord, help us. We need to help. <laughs> uh, Proverbs 6, 2 said, Thou, talk, I'm talking to you, God's talking to me, man, woman, child. Thou art snared. That word snared means entrapped, brought into trouble, brought into sickness, brought into poverty, or kept in sickness, or kept in poverty, or brought into, oh, okay, all right, brought into destruction. Thou art snared with the words of thy mouth. That's how you get in trouble. That's how you stay in trouble, by the words of your mouth. Apostle, I'm in trouble. Apostle, I'm in trouble. Apostle, I'm still in trouble. What do you say, Apostle? Well, friend, you can you have the freedom to choose to be in trouble. I don't want to be in trouble, Apostle, but I'm in trouble, I'm in trouble. Your tongue calls you to be in trouble. Thank you, Jesus. Your tongue is keeping you in trouble. Thou art snared with the words of that mouth. I know I'd be the first one to lay off when 
and they're going to have a lay offensive plan. I know I'll be the first one to go even though I've been working faithfully. I mean, I just work and I do my job and everything, but they say they're going to have a big layoff and everything. I got seven children and everything. I'm going to lose my job and I ain't going to have no way to feed my children, but, but, but I, I'm going to keep on serving Jesus. And then the layoff come. His name is the top of it. The top one on the list, you lay it off. Even some of the, the supervisors say, well, why are we laying off a good, this man really works. Well, we just need to get rid of you. <laughs> they are snared by the words of that man. I, 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 just, I just can't figure out math and science, Apostle. Trying to, trying to graduate from high school, but I can't, can't figure out the subject of math. It's nothing wrong with your brain. But your brain will do what you tell it, it to do. It will do what you tell it. it, it if you say it can't, it won't do. You mean, Apostle, I could do that if, I, if my tongue was, was, uh, was saying I could do it? I'm going to read this. Thou art snared with the words of thy mouth. Apostle, I just can't get out of debt. I'm working seven jobs. Notice what the man said. He cannot get out of debt. He's working seven jobs, but he can't get out of debt. And I'm going to add this too. And I'm also I'm giving God my tithes and offerings. No faith with it. He, he's, he's giving it down to unbelief. No faith. He's looking for no prosperity. He's looking for nothing, and that's what he's getting every time. He said he can't get out, and his tongue got him in there. I'm going to move on. Thou art snared, because I can stay here a while, but just as one person, thou art snared with the words of thy mouth. The word snared means to entrap someone. People have entrapped themselves. They go to the doctor. They say, well, I really don't know. I could run some more tests, but it kind of seemed like you might have cancer. I knew it. I knew it. I, let me call my wife. Honey. This same thing we were talking about. I said, you know, because Grandpa had cancer, running to the family, you know, this genetic stuff. I, uh, uh, yeah, uh, it, it's cancer. Then, then your wife said, well, have you read the test yet? No, not yet, but I already know me. You know we know it. Next thing you know, they run the test, he got cancer. Thou art snared with the words of thy mouth. Uh, uh, um, mm. Entrap means to catch in or as if in a trap. It means to lure into danger or difficulty. Your tongue, the word from your mouth, brings you into difficulty. Is it thou art taken? That word take means to accept something offered, to allow, to come in, give access or admission to. It means to admit. Thou art taken by the words of thy mouth. I don't know why the devil won't leave me alone, apostle. He's taken, the devil got by the words of his mouth. I don't know why the devil is all on me every night, apostle. He's taken. He gave, it, it, he gave admission to the devil. He gave entry to the devil by the words of his mouth. He gave place to the devil by the words of his mouth. Bible says neither give place to the devil in Ephesians 4 27. I'm gonna move on. Hallelujah. Uh, Proverbs 12 6 says this. But the mouth of the upright, the righteous people, shall deliver them. That word deliver means set free. The word the mouth of the upright will set them free. No matter what comes against the upright, they speak that they're delivered from that. God has already redeemed me from the curse of the law. I'm walking healthy. They say, Apostle, seemed like he was coughing. I, I don't receive that. I don't receive any curse. Hallelujah. I prosper. My soul prospers. Hallelujah. I walk in hell. The mouth of the upright shall deliver them. You get a letter in the mail saying, we foreclosing on your house. We taking your cars. We don't want those children of yours. But, but, uh, <laughs> We taking a livestock in, in the mouth of the Lord. I said, you're not taking nothing from me. The Lord has blessed me with this. The blessing of the Lord is making me rich. And he had no sorrow with it. Bible said, oh, no man anything but to love one another. I love you. And, and, but I don't owe you anything. Thank you, Jesus. 
and you get another letter. We decided to just cancel all debts and say paid in full. The mouth of the upright shall deliver them. Apostle, I heard you say that the doctor said you, you, you had type 2 diabetes. But you didn't hear when the doctor told me to stop taking diabetic medication because I said I was healed with this stripes and no diabetes were found, was not found in my body anymore. You didn't hear that, did you? Apostle, I heard you said that, that you were temporarily paralyzed. Did you, did you say temporarily? Yeah, yeah, Apostle. So you all physical things here on this planet temporary. That, that was a fact. I was temporarily paralyzed. But I said I was healed while I was temporarily paralyzed because I knew my mouth would deliver me from paralysis. And I, you see I'm not paralyzed anymore, friend. Thank you, Jesus. When they said I had congestive heart failure three times. Hallelujah. Now they said my heart is sound. Good heart rate, good heart. Good working hard. You know why? Because I said I didn't accept what they said. I, I, I didn't let them entrap me with their words, and I didn't trap myself into that sickness and disease by speaking death or speaking the wrong thing. I didn't say, well, you man, it's failing. Y'all might as well be in a coffin now. Take me away. <laughs> no, 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 I didn't say that. I said my heart is healthy. It's the healthy heart of God. My arteries and veins are healthy. They never narrow. Narrow, and they always are clear blockage. And well, that's the result. Uh, the choices that you make, they bring forth consequences. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, hallelujah. But the mouth of the upright shall deliver them. Not only do my mouth deliver me, it delivers me the other folk. When I hear about people being in trouble, immediately I go to them. Thank you, Jesus. And they said, what do you want to tell me today, Apostle? You set free from that trumpet in Jesus' name. And they set free just like that. They come back with the testimony. Apostle, I thought they, they had six charges against me. They were trying to send me to the penitentiary. They dismissed all charges against me. Apostle, I didn't know what to do. They said they were taking the farm, my house, and you know what I mean? And, and it seemed like I couldn't get a job. And, you know, I didn't know what to do, but you came in and said God had delivered me. I got a job. I paid off all my land. The mouth of the upright shall deliver them. Thank you, Jesus. And the lips of the righteous feed many. This is so powerful. Feed many with, with the good things of God. Hallelujah. I'm moving on. Hallelujah. I could stay there for a while. Twelve six. You know, when my mind was not it was acting soundly for a temporary period of time. I said, my mind is sound based on 2 Timothy 1 7. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. I could go in my kitchen and forget what I went in my kitchen to go get. Whether it was a glass of water, chicken, or egg, or something, you know, to eat. I, 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 you know, that happened for a period of time. But I kept saying, what God's word said. I, I had chosen life. I had chosen a blessing. I had chosen a sound mind. And, and I wouldn't accept anything else. Hallelujah. But when I talked this word, and I, I didn't forget a scripture, not a verse, not a comma, not a period. Hallelujah. Because I got this word inside of me. And of course my mind, you know, it started working sound. The memory of the righteous is blessed. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I'm going to move on to James chapter 3, verse 2. And it says, if any man, that would include me, you too, friend, offend not. Now that word offend means to violate, it means to transgress, it means to sin, it means to, uh, to violate divine law, it means to violate a rule or law. Now it says, if any man offend not in word, in other words, if I speak only right, if I speak only as I should speak, if I speak only what thus said the Lord, is it the same as a perfect man? You're looking at a perfect man. Because I always speak the word of God. And if any man says not with his tongue, if any man does not violate the divine law of confession, godly confession, 
He's a perfect man and able also to bridle the whole body. That word bridle means to control the whole body. See, I'm able to control my whole body. When they said, you have diabetes, I said, no, I, I have healing by the stripes of Jesus. And that appeared. When they said, you got congestive heart failure, I said, no, I got the healthy heart of God by his word. And because Jesus took my infirmities in his own body and bear my sicknesses, hallelujah, I'm healed. And they come back with another uh, uh, pro prognosis or diagnosis saying, you got a healthy heart. Hallelujah. Huh? It says, you're able to bridle the whole body. Thank you, Jesus. When I was paralyzed, I said I was up walking because I'm healed with the stripes. You know what my body had to do? When it was temporarily paralyzed, you know what my body had to do? What a You had to get up. And walk free from paralysis. Hallelujah. Because I didn't sin with my mouth. I, 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 I didn't violate the spiritual law of confession. If any man offend not in word, thank you, Jesus. And see, you offend in word when you're not saying what thus saith the Lord. You're already cursing yourself. The, your door is open for the curse to come in. The windows in your house are open for the curse to come in when you're violating uh, spiritual law, the spiritual law, the confession of God's word. Jesus. Hallelujah. Uh, it says in Proverbs chapter 16, verse 1, and the answer of the tongue is from the Lord. See, my, whatever my tongue says is from the Lord. You know, I'm swift to hear, hear the Holy Ghost. And slow to speak because I, I will make sure I got it from God. And then I speak and say, I don't offend in word because I only speak God's word. God's word created everything. God's word transforms things, displays things. It, it controls things. That's why I see signs, wonders, and miracles all the time because I, I, I uh, don't offend in word. Thank you, Jesus. I let God <clears throat> do all my talk. You know, God know what to say. <laughs> God know exactly what to say about everything. When God saw darkness, he didn't say, I might as well go back in the house. It's certainly the dark out here. You know, there'll never be any light. Because if he had said there'll never be any light, there never would be any light. There never would have been any light. He wanted to see light. He said, let there be light. Thank you, Jesus. God called Abraham. We call Abraham Abraham. Called a man, and the man's body was dead. Called the father of many nations. Thank you, Jesus. I'm going to read that if I have time. I will read that. If any man offend not in word, the same is a perfect man, and also able and able also to bridle the whole body. You see, I don't feel in word. I'm able to control my tongue. Hallelujah. Who has? It said, no man has tamed the tongue. No man but the Holy Ghost has tamed the tongue. The word will tame your tongue. And, and, and it'll keep you healthy, prosperous, keep you, you know, when you don't offend in words, you, 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 you think right. You can't do something you haven't thought about doing. And see, the words that you speak determine what you think. Hallelujah. And if you speak only what thus saith the Lord about all things, and as it concerns you in Christ Jesus, what he said he's done for you in Christ Jesus, if you think only on those things, you speak only those things, you're going to think what you speak. You're able to bridle your whole body. You're able to control your thinking. You're able to control that tongue that no man was, was able to tame. You're able to call that tongue to be tamed. You, you control your health of your body, your finances, your relationship with your children, a relationship with your, with your wife, and your fellowship with the Lord when you don't offend in word. I'm, I'm going to move on. Proverbs 16, 1 says, And the answer of the tongue is from the Lord. Hallelujah. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 18 says this, While we look not at the things which are seen, because the things which are seen then are temporary. Hmm? The physical things are temporary. We can choose to have something else. We see one thing uh, 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 in this physical world that we don't like. We don't have to accept that we can choose something else. Man has the freedom to choose. While we look not at the things which are seen, you see, when 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 uh, I temporarily wasn't able to move my body, I wasn't looking at that. Well, what were you looking at, apostles? 
but into things which are not seen. I saw myself walking about, being able to do anything that I, 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 I had been able to do before I was temporarily paralyzed. Thank you, Jesus. Well, we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen, for the things which are seen are temporal. Physical things are temporal. See, I have spirit eyes and I have natural eyes. See, what my natural eyes can't see, my spirit eyes can see. And see, everything was first spirit before it became physical. The spirit created all physical things. The spirit has authority over and dominion over all physical things. The, the spirit can displace physical things. The spirit is the word spoken. Yes, Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. It says, while well, we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. You see, if your natural eyes can see that your bank accounts are bankrupt, don't be just looking at that. Look with your eyes on the inside and see that you owe no man anything. See that your bank accounts are filled with money. See that you, you're blessed going out, blessed coming in. See that you're the lender not to borrow. You, you, you're the head not to tell. You're above only and not beneath. See that with your eyes on the inside. Look at what's not seen. Because the things which are not seen are eternal. And the and God's word is eternal. First Peter chapter 1, verse 25 says, But the word of the Lord endureth forever. See, the word of God is the eternal things. And the word of God are the eternal things. While we look not at the things which are seen, but the things which are not seen. Stop looking at yourself sick with your natural eyes and use your inward vision and see yourself healthy and strong based on God's word which is the eternal thing that said, but he was wounded for our transgression, he was bruised for our iniquity, the chastisement of our peace, the, the, the correction needed for our wholeness was upon Jesus, and with his strife we are healed. Look at the eternal thing with your inward vision and speak it with your mouth, and that's what shall appear in your life. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I'm going to make this statement. There is no doubt that sin is pleasurable for a time. That's all true. I'm going to prove it the word of God. You know, when the old man was out, you know, fornicating with different women and stuff like that, that was pleasurable to him for a while. Sin is pleasurable for a season. Huh? There is no doubt that sin is pleasurable for a time. But when that time has concluded, then the penalty for that sin arise, which is death. Uh, season means a period of time. Uh, uh, Hebrews 11, 25. Some people say, I'm not hurting any of bad about myself or possibly about what, what I'm doing. Yeah, you're hurting the people that love you. Because they don't want to see you out there doing those uh, terrible things uh, to yourself, your own drugs, you're abusing yourself, you're on the, with alcohol, and abusing yourself with other women and men and uh, yeah you, you hurt the one that that you love and sometimes people don't know how to be operating in faith because they haven't been taught that to be in faith concerning you and they this word and you call them the blood pressure to be high you call them a half heart trouble yeah you are hurting people by your behavior you have an effect on people by what you do it says in in uh hebrews 11 25 it says that and you, you can hurt your own children out there drunk all the time. Your son see you falling down. And, I, I'm not hurting anybody. Yes, you are. You're wounding your children. You, they're watching your behavior. Don't you know children mimic the behavior of their parents? Talking about you not hurting anybody. Yeah, you, you're hurting yourself and you're hurting the ones that love you. Mm -hmm. Hebrews 11, 25 said, and talking about Moses, esteeming the reproach of Christ greater riches than the treasures in Egypt. For he had respect unto the recompense of the reward. Uh, verse 25, that wasn't verse 25. Choosing rather to suffer affliction, that's what it says about Moses, with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. Huh? Yeah, there are pleasures in sin, but it's only for a short period of time. But when payday come, friend, mm, 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 and people out there that was just fornicating, and then they came up with AIDS. But they enjoyed the fornication until AIDS arrived. 
for sin. I said the statement I made, there's no doubt that sin is pleasurable for a time. But when that time has concluded, then the penalty for that sin arises, which is death. There are people out there doing perverted things and say, it's saved, it's saved, this same sex we're doing, apostle. They're enjoying that. It's pleasure to them for a time. Huh? Then the penalty for that sin shall arise. And uh, I'm going to say this about uh, uh, Abraham and I will conclude because I am at my hour. Romans chapter 4. I said that the message is the choices that you make, they bring forth consequences. Some people want to go around and say the consequences of their life is not their fault because of what somebody else has done. Which that's not true. <laughs> the consequences that have occurred in your life is based on your action, what you've done. Your actions, your behavior, the things that you've done, the words that you've spoken cause the consequences uh, of that act to be in your life. You are at fault for your own life if it's not right. <laughs> Romans 4, 17, as it is written, I have made thee a father of many nations. Now, that's what God told Abraham. He told him that when Abraham's body was dead, when Abraham didn't, couldn't see no children in his house, when his wife was 90 years old, and, and, and her womb was dead, and Abraham's body was dead. God said to Abraham, as it is written, I have made thee a father of many nations. Before him whom he believed, he believed God who quickeneth the dead, make alive the dead, and calleth those things which be not as though they were, who against hope, believed in hope, that he might become the father of many nations, according to that which was spoken, so shall thy seed be. And being not weak in faith, Abraham was not weak in faith, and I'm going to show you how not to be weak in faith, and I'm here to my conclusion. He was not weak in faith, and being not weak in faith, he considered not, See, when you're strong in faith, there are things you don't consider. What did, did he not consider? He didn't consider that his body was already dead. Consider means to think of, to imagine, to, to picture a thing. We think in pictures. He wasn't pitching that. He was pitching what God said. God said that he had made him the father of many nations. He pictured his offspring. He pictured his body being able to perform with his own vision. It says, and being not weak in faith, he considered not his own body now day. Some people are looking at to consider the situation. Well, I know God said he brought my husband to me, but that man and say he brought him right, that man acting like the devil. No, he ain't my he ain't my husband. I thought God answered my prayer, but I just don't know. You considering the temporary physical things instead of considering what God's word said. That's why you don't see it. That's for somebody out there. Uh, and being not weak in faith, he considered not his own body now dead when he was about a hundred years old, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. He staggered not at the promise of God. He staggered not at the word of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God, and being fully persuaded. You know how he was fully persuaded? He didn't consider the temporary things, the physical things that were contrary to God's word. He didn't think on those things. He didn't imagine those things. He didn't speak those things. He considered only the promise. He saw what the promise said to him. He saw himself walking in the promise. He saw his children as the stars of heaven. He saw his children as the, the, the sand on the seashore. And that's what happened because he didn't consider The temporary things. And all things on the earth are in the temporal state. It says in verse 21, and being fully persuaded that what he had promised, what God had promised, God promised by word, he was able also to perform them. Thank you, Jesus. And of course, he became the father of many nations. Well, I love you. That's the end of the message. God bless you. See you next time. Friend, the just shall live by faith.